What is going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today we're going to cover the latest web which is full of also new information regarding new raid when it's released nerf to exotics and uh I don't know if it's a nerf or a buff to my beloved Wormhouse Crown. We will discuss that later on in the video and so many other new details to come, guys. But before we get into that, if you would like to support me and the channel, hitting that like button truly does do that. And if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe for them daily forsaken videos. But let's get into the TWAB. And it starts with the Gambit 24 hour trial, which will arrive on September 1st, 10 a.m. PDT, which is, I believe is 6 p.m. UK time, people. And it will end 24 hours after this, 10 a.m. PDT, September 2nd, which is 6 p.m. UK time, guys. Uh, when it ends on September 2nd, it will then come back with a Forsaken on September 4th, which is going to be a great... Actually, I'm actually happy they're allowing us to actually demo this actual new game mode i mean like yeah it's gonna be great it really is so let's move on people and quoting bungie right here about that time many of you have been reaching out with questions about start times and dates you want to know the exact time you will be able to start hunting down aldrin and his barons and then when you can turn your might toward whatever horrors await you within the raid on September 4th, there will be a day one patch that players will need to download before they can play Forsaken. Destiny 2 will be brought down for maintenance at 7am PDT. And we anticipate that the patch will become available to players on all platforms by 7.30am PDT. Maintenance will end at 10am PDT. And assuming you have completed your download, you can start playing Forsaken at that time. The next date we want you to circle on your calendar is when the raid will open up and when the race for Worlds First will begin. Here you see the designer Joe Blackburn to tell you more, so quote and Joe right here. Forsaken is proof that full Destiny 2 experience is just beginning when the campaign comes to a close. With so many new things to do and so much power to gain. We knew that players would need more than just three days to prepare for the incredible challenges of Forsaken's raid. That's why Last Wish. So the name of the raid is Last Wish. This is actually leaked last week. I covered it in a video. The next chapter in Destiny 2's Raiding Legacy. This goes live on September 14th at 10 a.m. PDT. Again, guys, 6 p.m. UK time. A week and a half after you first step foot on the Tangled Shore. Good luck, Guardians. So it comes out basically 10 days after the Forsaken. This to me is good news because I'm so busy making videos, guys, in the early stages of these DLCs. I'm never really ready for the raids. But 10 days, I think that's plenty of time for me to get ready. What do you think about this? Let me know down below within that comments section. So we're going to move on to Mod Squad. There's been some confusion about new mods coming on September 4th. Many of you are asking what gear will take mods and what will happen to the old mods when a new hotness arrives. We brought in design lead Joel Shamrock to answer these questions. Quoting Shamrock right here. Hey everybody, I'm back on this beautiful twab before the twab before, if you catch my meaning, to paint you a clearer picture regarding year two mods. The first thing we need to do is to properly set expectations for the acquisition of year two mods. We want mods to be more meaningful customizations to your gear that allow you to make it your own. As you've likely seen from the combat stream, we've added several options that will let you adapt your arsenal to your style of play. Although the stream showcased a huge stockpile of mods, when you can't give yourself an unlimited number of mods using a debug build, you'll find these items are intentionally rare. Those of you who are smugly sitting atop a pile of mod components will be able to stock up on some year two mods from the gunsmith. The rest of us, however, will slowly mod our way to victory one hard earned drop after another. Specifically, year two mods come from the following sources. All exotic armor drops, regardless of year, have a chance to come equipped with a mod. Non year two legendary weapons and armor drops have a small chance to come equipped with a mod. You are free to keep the weapon, should that particular weapon and mod combo suit your needs, or you may choose to dismantle the weapon to break out the mod for use elsewhere. You may pull mods out of gear for use in other mods by dismantling the original item they dropped in. Alternatively, should you want the item but not the mod, you can choose to to slot in a new mod over the old one. Weapons and armor purchased from vendors do not come with mods. If you have the mod components and glimmer necessarily to feed your habit, you may choose to go straight to Banshee 44 the gunsmith who will have two mod packages available for purchase. Direct buyer to armor mod 
updated daily, direct buy, year two weapon mod updated daily. You may acquire mod components for trading with Banshee 44 by dismantling other loose mods. Armor. Year 2 armor mods always drop 1 mod component when dismantled. Year 1 legendary armor mods always drop 1 mod component when dismantled. Year 1 rare armor mods have a chance of dropping 1 mod component when dismantled. Weapons. Year 2 weapon mods always drop 1 mod component and legendary shards when dismantled. Year 1 legendary weapon mods always drop 1 mod component and gunsmith materials when dismantled. Year 1 rare weapon mods have a small chance to drop 1 mod component and gunsmith materials when dismantled. As of the launch of the Forsaken on September 4th, Year 1 armor mods in your inventory will cease to work but can be dismantled or traded for materials. Year 1 armor mods currently slotted into your Year 1 armor will cease to work but remain slotted into the armor seen on the screen. Now this is what it will look like. Year 2 armor mods will be able to be slotted into both Year 1 and Year 2 armor mod slots. So that's absolutely epic people. So all our Year 1 armors will be viable within Year 2. That is great, great news in my opinion. Okay, so we're going to move on and on to a sneak peek of next week's patch notes. Quoting Bungie right here, next Tuesday a lot of changes go into effect. We have covered many of them in the combat stream and previous twabs, but there are still a few more bullet points to fire out. Here is a look at a few more things changing in update 2.0.0 on August 28th. Changes by class. Hunter. Marksman Dodge is now considered a reload. It can interact with Kill Clip and Rat King, etc, etc. Damn! I don't, this is just ridiculous. That's amazing. That is amazing. I love it. Exotic Armor. Celestial Nighthawk will now grant 33% of your super energy back if the target is killed by your golden gun shot. That's amazing too. The Worm Husk Crown people will no longer start regeneration of health and shields. Instead will grant a larger health and shield bump at the beginning of dodge instead of at the end. So let me get this straight as a little bit of confusion here. This will no longer start regeneration of health and shields. Because that's what happens when you dodge. At the end of the dodge that's what happens. So it means if you are at low health and you dodge, you can still die, it doesn't start regeneration straight away, I've had this happen to me hundreds of times. Instead we'll grant a larger health and shield bump at the beginning of the dodge instead of at the end. So really guys, isn't this a buff? I mean it's, it's eliminating being killed while dodging when you're at a low health. You get an instant health and shield bump as soon as you initiate the dodge. I mean, we're going to have to see in action to see how it properly works. But to me, it kind of seems like a buff. Let me know what you think about this down below in that comment section. Obviously, hunters only. Warlocks and titans, you don't have a say here. You don't have a say. Hunters only, people. Let me know what you think about this. Is it a buff? Is it a nerf? Let me know what you think. Moving on to the warlock. Increase healing rift effectiveness. Empowering Rift now increases precision damage. Previously, bonus damage was capped at the weapon's precision damage in PvP. Exotic Armor, Skull of Dire Ahamkara, increased super energy gain from Nova Bomb kills. Killing higher ranked enemies will grant more super energy. Transverse steps, enhanced mobility after you sprint for a short time, your currently equipped weapon will be automatically reloaded. Titan, Rally Barricade no longer requires players to take cover to reload. It now feeds ammo to your magazine over time. Damn! Exotic Armor, Helm of Saint-14, now grants allies an overshield for a short duration when they are passing through the Ward of Dawn. Cool. Mask of the Quiet One, increased energy gain from incoming damage. While critically wounded, health will be granted from kills. So that's pretty cool. Never actually seen anybody use this exotic, so it's probably why it's getting buffs. Moon on to Grenade. Axiom bolts increase base damage, increase the amount of time it takes for tracking and strength to lessen. Flashbang, increase base damage. Incendiary grenade, increase base damage. Storm grenade, increase base damage. Scatter grenade, retune range and falloff ranges for the detonations for more reliable damage. Magnetic fusion and flux grenade, increase base damage. Damage is now the same whether a target has been stuck or simply walked over the grenade when detonating. Magnetic grenade now detonates a second time only if it's attached to a target. The second detonation no longer only occurs on the grenade itself and will now be applied to each individual target hit by the initial detonation. Damn! Skip grenade, increased impact damage of each skip grenade drone, impact for a higher total potential damage. Void wall, increase the damage of the initial void wall wave. So that's pretty cool people. And they go on to talk about misc changes. Swords will have the ability to accept traders. Adding a timer to the status effect of the Healing Rift, Empowering Rift and Rally Barricade to communicate the time remaining before they expire. 
wanted escapees from the prison of elders will roam the open world. They will not drop rewards until September 4th, 2018, increasing the difficulty of Lost Sectors. Example, EDZ Lost Sector will become 240 Power and on to Zer. His will is his own. He will no longer display a vendor icon on destination maps. He will no longer be tied to flashpoints. He has a clear purpose but cannot explain it. Forgive him. Fated engrams will grant only pre-forsaken exotics. So damn, Zer is the way it should have been from day one. It's going to be like, where's Wally or where's Waldo? It's going to be like trying to find him. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Love it. And guys, that's basically about it. They go on to talk about a few other changes, this, that and the other. Nothing major, but if you do want to check it out, you'll find it linked within the video description. But guys, damn, some major changes coming. The raid coming out September 14th. Pretty cool. Mods as well, being able to apply mods to a year one armor. Epic. And the worm host crying people. Nerf, buff, let me know what you think about this down below in that comment section. But guys, on that note, I am out. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, it really does help me out. And I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much for stopping by and hopefully I'll see you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand. But you and I will carry on. Never get it right